Happy Friday, everyone. I have a question for you. Do you prefer your coffee or tea, if you're not a coffee drinker, hot or iced? I don't care what temperature it is outside, I will always get iced coffee, and I was curious if anyone else is like me. Anyways, I'm Stella Chung, and in today's fix, Square Enix provided a small update on the next Final Fantasy VII entry. Diablo 4 players on PS5 are having a rough time getting the game to launch. Somehow, about 400 players died to Rick the Door Technician in Jedi Survivor, and there's some cute new colors coming to the Switch Joy-Con. <laughs> Fantasy fans can all breathe a sigh of relief because Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is confirmed to be releasing this winter. It's been three years since Final Fantasy VII Remake launched, and while there was DLC, it's been a long time since players have heard anything about the second part to the remake. Square Enix posted the smallest Q&A on their FF7 Twitter account and answered the question, how is development progressing on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Development is progressing smoothly and according to plan. We are currently working on nailing down a release date for the game. So there's no official release date yet, but Square did confirm it's still on track for their original launch window. The second part to Final Fantasy VII Remake was announced last June as Rebirth. There was a debut trailer at the Final Fantasy VII 25th anniversary celebration event, where Square also announced the remake was going to be a three-part trilogy and that the finale was already in development. The quietness from Square until now seems to be a good sign since they've been working hard on the next two parts for Final Fantasy VII. We may get another announcement very soon in one of the many video game showcases happening this summer, which you can keep up with via our Summer of Gaming coverage starting next week. And in the meantime, Final Fantasy 16 is releasing June 22nd, and we got more of an in-depth look at how the game is going to look and play last week in the Sony Showcase. The demo for Final Fantasy 16 will be released about two weeks prior to the full game's launch, and the progress you make in the demo will actually transfer over to the final version of the game. So, if you're really fiending for Final Fantasy games, keep an eye out for the Final Fantasy 16 demo on the PlayStation Store soon. Speaking of games on the PlayStation, PS5 players who bought the deluxe versions of Diablo 4 are unable to play the game due to a persistent error bug. The official Diablo Twitter account posted yesterday at 5 p.m. that we are seeing reports regarding PlayStation users experiencing invalid license errors. The team is looking into this right now and will update once we have more information. Buying the Ultimate or Deluxe Edition of Diablo 4 gets players early access to the game a few days before normal retail launch. Diablo 4 officially launches June 4th or 5th, depending on your region, and early access gets you into the game June 1st. So it's actually a pretty big deal people aren't able to get early access when they spent their money on it. The digital deluxe version was $89.99, and the ultimate was $99.99. One Twitter user, Court Lalonde, tweeted $140 Canadian dollars for a game to play early. The game doesn't work and gives an error code. Priceless. Kevlar Mac tweeted, after over two hours of waiting, this is becoming annoying. People literally paid extra money for four days of early access to Diablo 4. Where's our compensation then? Most players reported a workaround by redeeming a free game or demo from the PlayStation Store, which reboots the system to remember you do have a valid license and then lets them access the game. I know some of you will be all, who spends that much money to get a game early? But if you really love the game and franchise, I totally get why you would, especially since the deluxe and ultimate versions do come with some cosmetic goodies. If you're paying for early access and benefits, you definitely deserve to be rewarded with them. The PC launch for early access was actually pretty smooth though. I got in without even a minute in queue and was really surprised. There wasn't any lag in the game and no graphical glitches that I've run into yet, so I was highly impressed. Unfortunately, that wasn't the experience for everyone so far, but the launch seems to be working a lot smoother than the beta launches did. But again, that's why betas exist, to iron out issues for day one. Hopefully PS5 players are able to get in soon. Who knew the line to hell was so long? This goes out to all of my gamers who bitched about games not being as hard as they used to be. EA has dropped some stats from Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and turns out more players lowered the difficulty than raised it this time around. The default difficulty Jedi Knight was the most popular, being played by 52.5% of players. Meanwhile, Story Mode and Jedi Padawan made up of 29.5% of player numbers 
and the harder difficulties, Jedi Master and Jedi Grand Master were at a lower 18%. Only 4% of players actually played Jedi Survivor on its hardest difficulty. Add my name to that 4% list because I just started my playthrough of Jedi Survivor and I'm playing it on Grand Master, the same difficulty I was on for the first game. The EA stats also showed that 489 players were defeated by Rick the Door Technician, a sort of boss that appears in the game and he's basically a scout trooper. Then, 9 million players were defeated by the Rancor, who I just found, and on Grandmaster difficulty, he kills you in one hit, no matter what move it is. I'm gonna wait to fight him a little bit longer since I'm not leveled very much, but holy f he sucks so much. I even tried changing my stances, but he just f slaps me into a new year, so I'm good waiting. Speaking of stances, most players use the single-handed stance, and a close second was the dual wield. I personally prefer the dual wield, but for really annoying enemies, I'll use single-handed for that extra power. The most popular lightsaber color is white, which surprised me because you can have your lightsaber basically be any color. I chose purple because I love purple, but also paying tribute to Darth Revan. I just finished playing Knights of the Old Republic for the first time, so I'm still not over that twist. What difficulty are you playing Jedi Survivor on? And did you find Octo Vogdo Jr.? Let me know how many times you died fighting that damn toad in the comments. My producer says it took him about 30 tries on Grandmaster difficulty. Switching over to Nintendo News, see what I did there? There are new beautiful pastel Switch Joy-Cons available to purchase June 30th. Nintendo tweeted out a photo of four new Joy-Cons, one pastel purple, green, pink, and yellow, with the text, start off your summer in style with this new line of pastel Joy-Con controllers. These Joy-Cons are the first in a while that haven't been special limited edition, but still come in at $79.99. You can pre-purchase them now, but all of the pastel colors are already sold out on Nintendo Shop. I'm kind of glad they're sold out because I definitely don't want to drop money on new Joy-Cons, but I honestly totally would for these colors. Along with the new Joy-Cons, June 30th will also feature a new Everybody 1-2 Switch, a sequel to the launch title 1-2 Switch back in 2017. This was announced in a tweet with a pre-order link and not much information was given, but it'll still involve wacky objects and be a series of mini games like the first game. And that's your fix for today. What games are you playing this weekend? Zelda, Diablo, or maybe Jedi? Let me know. Now that you're all caught up on the news, check out our System Shock review of the action adventure game remake from 1994 set in a cyberpunk world. Then be sure to follow us on all of your socials to keep up to date with IGN Summer of Gaming events happening next week. I'm Stella Chung, keep on gaming, and I'll see you next time.